Okay. There's a hundred seventy-five million hit there. There it is. Look at that. It's dead already. It's crazy. Here's a Mercy's Reach Elite Room at 98. Take a look at this. This build is ridiculous. Look at those bleed ticks. It just destroys everything. What's up guys, it's Zyger here. And the Barbarian is back in Season 1 of Diablo 4. But I have to stand corrected because the Double Swing Barbarian is not the most powerful build. The most powerful build is the Whirlwind Bleed build. And I'm going to show you why in this video. As you could see in the preview, it basically melts down Uber Lilith in both phases and utterly annihilates everything in Nightmare 100 dungeons. So I'm going to bring you the build guide here. I'm going to tell you which gear to use, what skills, what gems to use, the skill tree, your paragon board, the expertise to take, and also the malignant hearts to take because the season one mechanic of malignant hearts is perfect for this build. There's a few you need to take to really amplify your damage and get the full power of the barbarian. So this guide is gonna talk about that all and cover it all. So let's just get right into it, starting with the skills. So we have rallying cry here. Rallying cry is gonna be kind of your uh, movement speed and resource generation ability. We're going to use War Cry for Berserking and increased damage. And Challenging Shout, this is your primary damage mitigation skill. For Slot, you have f a few options. I like to take Iron Skin here. Alternatively, you could take Wrath of the Berserker, but Iron Skin fits in really well. It doesn't stop your Whirlwind, it gives you extra mitigation. And really, when we optimize this build, we have Berserking so much and quick speed that we don't even really need Wrath of the Berserker. Um, and I'll show you why after this, but Iron Skin I think fits in the best. For a generator, we have Lunging Strike, and Whirlwind is the bread and butter of this build. All right, let's talk gear. So first of all, with the helm, you want damage while berserking, cooldown reduction, total armor and maximum life. I have a very good helm. Plus you want the aspect for disobedience, which allows you to stack your armor up over time. This is an amazing aspect and really good rolls for this helm. For a chest, this is gonna be more controversial, but I'm going with Rage of Harogoth here. Alternatively, you could go for your pure damage mitigation chest that has damage reduction, damage reduction while close, damage reduction while fortified, and armor. Those are probably the four attributes you want, but I like this one because it's really gonna increase your uptime of Challenging Shout and War Cry and Rallying Cry and Iron Skin, but particularly War Cry and Challenging Shout. This uptime is going to give you awesome berserking and awesome damage reduction anyways. Um, but for par for uh, Nightmare 100 dungeons, you probably do want to run a pure damage mitigation chest. This one's just better for speedrunning 80s and 90s, I would say. For Bracer, you want Lucky Hit Chance, Critical Strike Chance, four ranks of Whirlwind, and one other stat. I have Dex, it's probably not the best option here. I would rather have Strength, all stats, or probably damage to injured enemies. But this was such a good Bracer, otherwise it's perfectly rolled otherwise that I'm using it. It's imprinted with the one that extends your Berserking uptime by two seconds. Again, another method to keep that Berserking damage going. For Chest, or for legs here, we want the same basic stats as what I listed off for a possible damage reduction chest. So damage reduction, damage reduction close, damage reduction while fortified in total armor. You want to imprint it with the aspect that gives you more fortify per fury spent while at maximum fury. You'll be generating a ton of it. With the boots, we want ghost walker here for more speed and then we want fury cost reduction, the movement speed increase after killing an elite, Berserking Duration and Movement Speed. Um, just a really good boots overall, and these are the four stats you want. For Weapon, I have basically my mace as a stat stick, so you're going to want Strength, Crit Strike Damage, Vulnerable Damage, and either Close or Core. I have Core on this one. Technically, I'd probably rather have Close if it was rolled so highly, but this is rolled very well anyways. And it's imprinted with the Berserk Ripping, and this is really at the heart of this build because your Berserk Ripping aspect uh, synergizes with the Barber Malignant Heart, which we'll talk about in a second, to really do that damage bleed drain, and then once 
your barber explodes, it does it again. And you'll be able to see this in the footage that I shared, but this is really key. You need to have this aspect on one of your two-handers because 60% is just crazy. Um, for your one-handers, you just want them both to be stat sticks that have strength, vulnerable damage, crit strike, and close or core. This one has close, and this one has close too, so they're both kind of optimal. And one of them should be have that Edge Masters aspect, just more damage, and one should have the Expectant aspect. Also more damage, allows you to do three lunging strikes and then snapshot that into your Whirlwind. It's really powerful. For the weapon, we're actually changing it up a little bit and putting the Limitless Rage aspect on it for a ton of damage because, again, you're generating a lot of Fury at Max Fury. This build has really no problems with Fury, and I'll talk about why when we get into the skill tree. But again, you want the same modifiers on the weapon. I have all stats here. I'd rather have strength, but otherwise this is rolled so well. It's ridiculous how good this sword is actually, so I can't complain and you know this might probably be my best piece or one of the best swords I've seen this season, so not to gloat, but this is a great item. For the amulet, we switch it up here. We're doing a little bit differently than if we were taking um, one of the, the skills that we're not taking. I'll talk about that in a bit, but I have heavy handed here, all defensive, movement speed, and cooldown. These are the four stats to have. You'll notice that I'm not taking Fury cost reduction um, because you don't really need that much Fury in this build. Um, same thing with my rings, which I'll discuss in a second. It's imprinted with the Whirlwind ability to uh, Dire Whirlwind just does more crit for every second it's, it's channeled. You're going to have with this setup about 75 um, total crit. Might get close to 80 actually. I'll have to check. For rings, we want vulnerable damage, lucky hit chance, critical strike damage, and crit chance. You'll notice no resource reduction anymore. We don't need it. It's imprinted with Echoing Fury to give us Fury per second when we use our shouts. Our shouts are up constantly. You're getting a ton of Fury by this anyways, so you don't need to go that extra mile, and the lucky hit's going to benefit you more. Same with the other ring. All right. Let me talk about the expertise. I'm using a two-handed slashing weapon, so I'm taking two-handed axe expertise. If you are taking mace, you might want to take this, this one or sword. The sword does a bleed, but we're getting bleed otherwise too, so I'm taking two-handed axe. For gems, we want blue in our armor. Just gives us more damage reduction while fortified. You'll constantly be fortified in this build. So it's wise to take. Red gems work too as you level up, but blues end up being better. For the weapons, we just want green. It's the most damage. All right, let's talk about the skill tree. Skill tree here, we have lunging strike upgraded to combat lunging strike for more berserking. We have whirlwind up to furious whirlwind to give us bleed. It's really imperative that we take that one rather than this one even though they're both good but this one's the one for this build i have three pressure point pressure points been fixed in this build to work with the barber so that's what you want to take i'll talk about the barber and other malignant hearts in a second coming down here to defensive skills i have rallying cry maxed and then up to tactical rallying cry then i have iron skin down to tactical iron skin Iron Skin gets a buff from the defensive bonus on my amulet, just like all of these abilities do. Challenging Shout, again maxed, down to Tactical Challenging Shout. This is your amazing damage reduction ability that has huge uptime if you use, especially if you use Disembowel Glyph and Rage of Haragoth, which I am. We have Warcry here for the Brawling skills upgraded to Power Warcry. And then we have three Booming Voice, and three guttural yell just gives your shouts more uptime and then you have more damage reduction it's really good and then here we have aggressive resistance at three most people and other whirlwind builds are taking this one you don't need this one you don't need any more fury generation you just want three here um, i'm also taking three swiftness just more movement speed i move really fast it's the fastest moving build i've ever built because i'm able to put it on the amulet Weapon Mastery, we have three Pit Fighter. I'm taking one No Mercy. I also forgot to mention I'm taking three Imposing Presence up here too. Just more life. But down here, 
Um, like I said, three pit fighter, one no mercy. We have one in hamstring that slows healthy enemies because we're basically making everything bleed. It's really useful to take. Um, slows them so they're kind of vulnerable to other types of damage you wouldn't get normally. Then we have thick skin once as a gateway to get three counter offensive. Counter offensive is awesome, just a lot more damage. And then we come down to the ultimate skills. We're actually not taking an ultimate skill other than three heavy handed, just more two handed damage. And then down here, key passes. We're not going with unbridled rage. We're actually going with gushing wounds and that helps us save an immense amount of fury and it actually does more damage. Because again, this synergizes with your berserk ripping aspect and the barber to do those huge damage draining hits that you saw in the preview. All right, let's go to the Paragon board. For the Paragon board, I'm not going to go into each and every node, but you can take a look at my planner in the link in the description below if you want to see every node. I'm just going to talk about glyph to glyph, but you can see the nodes and the boards down there. So first glyph we have is territorial here. Damage to close enemies and damage reduction against closed enemies. All your damage is basically going to be close except when you're moving away but a lot of your damage comes from this. It's also really good mitigation. We're coming up to Marshall. Marshall just helps your shout uptime and gives you a lot of other bonuses as you can see here. It's really basically crucial for this build. Then we're coming up here to Exploit. Exploit does a lot more vulnerable damage, which is basically the best modifier in the game for damage, and it makes enemies vulnerable. It's just best of both worlds. Um, we're coming down here to get the Warbringer node, I will mention that one. Coming up here, Disembowel, you want basically the minimum world or willpower here to get Disembowel. Just gives you a ton more Shout uptime, which is really, really important, and Iron Skin uptime. You're also getting more physical damage over time. It's not that great, but the uptime for the non-ultimate abilities is super good. It's a very useful skill that you basically need. Over here we're coming down to Tenacity for more survivability, but the Glyph is going to be on Wrath. More critical strike damage, basically the second best modifier in the game. And skills that critically strike generate 3 Fury, which a ton do. Like I said, you have basically 80% crit strike chance once you're channeling. Um, Undaunted up here, more damage while fortified, which you basically always will be unless you're taking a lot of damage and you gain 10% damage reduction. So overall, a lot of survivability, a lot of damage. I'm trying to touch the rare nodes that are really good. This one can't meet the secondary requirement, but that's fine. Many of them you can. So that's the Paragon tree, or the Paragon board. All right, let's talk about the Malignant Hearts. For Malignant Hearts, you want one orange slot amongst your jewelry, one blue slot, and one slot that can be anything. So I usually have the anything slot as my amulet because it's the hardest to roll. I have the barber here. The barber gem is the most important aspect of this build outside of the berserk ripping aspect that we have right here. Barber gem just does an insane amount of damage when it combines with that. You're gonna basically make enemies absorb all your hits, all your bleeds, and they're gonna drain. And once the barber explodes, it hits it again. So it's just an insane amount of damage. It's what I was doing to do over a hundred, I think, I think I did 150 million hit to Uber Lilith with this. It's just insane. With this Brutal Heart, you want the one that suppresses damage. I have the 19.5% one, and then it explodes um, when you use a defensive skill. That secondary part of it's not that helpful, but the damage mitigation is really good. So this one ends up being just a great damage mitigation tool that helps you a lot. Um, for the Bold Chieftain's Ring here, I forgot to mention the aspect, but it's the most imperative one to take. But the Vicious Heart that we take, um, we want to take this Vicious Heart rather than the one that does more crit strike damage at the expense of non-crit strike hits because your bleeds don't crit strike, so you don't want to do you know, less powerful bleeds. This one um, drains life at the expense of um, basically doing increased damage for a time. It's really good. All right. Um, that's about it. This build is the most powerful one I've ever seen for the Barbarian. It kind of reminds me of the days before Gores was nerfed. 
and it can definitely speed run Nightmare 100s as you saw in the footage. There is some ability to optimize it. I'm playing around with the best kind of combinations of aspects. Some people like take the whirlwind aspect off and might put it on the gloves and then put the gloves on the helm and then put disobedience on the amulet. That's good too if you want a disobedience that goes up to 45% and gives you more mitigation. That's a, a good way to optimize, but I'm sure there's other things too. So. If you're playing this build, let me know in the comments below. How would you optimize it? What do you think of this build? Do you think it's overpowered? Um, do you think it's powered correctly? Do you think we're now on the level of rogues and, and druids again? Let me know in the comments below. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel for more retro gaming and Diablo 4 content. And I'll see you guys next time.